video lessons I've been doing them for the last two or three years so decided it was time to do a bit of a compilation I'm gonna put them all in one big video and I've edited them down a bit so if you want to watch the full videos go and check out the cramps playlist all the links will be below and if you want extra tabs or backing tracks I've got a patreon for that so here we go let's go watch some old videos <laughs> Death Ray Cats, we're back with another Cramps tune, very quick one. This one's primitive, it's a cover, it's also borrowed a little bit from Smokestack Lightning, but this is how Ivy does it. Tabs are going to be in the Patreon, there's going to be a backing track, just the drums if you want to play along. If you're wondering about effects, I've got a bit of tremolo on, I've got some spring reverb and that's it. I'm going to start with a low E, then we're going to play the top E and the B string together. Then we're going to play the third fret on the top E string. You can bend that a little bit if you want. I'm going to go from the second fret on the G. I'm going to slide up to the fourth fret there. Then we're going to play the fourth fret again. Then on the way down, we're going to hit the second fret on the G. Open G, second fret on the D, then open D. So all together. That's it, that's the riff. There we go. That's pretty much the song, there's a bit where it goes up to the B here, so 2nd fret, 1st finger on the A string, and then 4th frets, I'm going to do that with the ring finger on the D, G and B. Let me do an A chord. So that's an E minor there. with the rhythm parts just with a couple of chords and there's a couple of ways you can play these we'll start off with the open chords you've got an E major and you've got a D so they're your first two shapes and the rhythm goes like this quick changes. Later on we're going to go in between an A and a G. Back to the E and D. Then there's a little turnaround in the verse, we're going to go back to this power chord, so 2nd fret on the A string, 1st finger, 2nd fret on the A string, ring fingers on the 4th fret of the D string, little fingers on the 4th fret of the G string. 
And when we get to You Better Duck, we're going to play this chord. Four times, four stabs on that power chord on the second fret. When I show up, we go down to the A. And we can do the full A. And we can just play the power chord there. And then we go back to the E to the D. So that's pretty much the rhythm part, so that's fairly easy if you know your chords, or it's quite tricky if you're new to the chords. What we'll do now is look at the single note stuff, which is on the other guitar in the recording. If you've got any kind of reverb on any of your effects, they'll sound good for this. If you've got a Fender amp with a real spring reverb, then even better. So for the lead guitar in this, we've got a few bits that happen after the vocal parts. So I'll just tackle them one at a time. The first one... I'm going to start on the A string. I'm going to play on the 2nd fret. I'm going to play an open D. Then the 1st fret on the D string. And the 2nd fret. Like this. Play it twice. And we're playing the second fret on the A twice. Then we're going to go up to the second fret on the D string again and play that a bunch of times. Three times. Then we're going to go back to the second fret on the A. So there's some back and forth going on. This will all be tapped out in the Patreon. And to finish that lick, we're staying on the second fret on the A. It's just kind of held and wrung out. So the second lick is pretty much the same, but we're going to end it slightly differently because we're going up to an A. done is exactly the same. But at this point we're going to go from the second to the first to the open A. Because the rest of the band is going to be going to the A part. Now we've gone to the A, we're going to play around in that A area. But we're going to start with the open E. Three hits on the open E. Then we go to the A. And then to the third fret on the E. Then we're going to go to the open E. Back to the third fret. Then back to the open A. Then when we go back to the E, it's like the first couple of times but even simplified and we're staying on that second fret there. For the better duck bit, in the first time round, there's no lead guitar, so you can just hear that. So you can either play along with that, or you can play what happens later on, which is some different lead lines. So when we go up to the B on the chords, the lead part is, which is just the G, the third fret on the E, open A, first fret on the A, second fret on the A, and then on the B, then when we go to the A part, we're going literally from the B, 2nd fret on the A, 2 hits there, then 1st fret, and landed on the A. So the next part is slightly different. Second 
7th fret on the D string, then the open D, then to the 2nd fret on the A string, then back to the D, and then we've got 3 hits on the 2nd fret on the D string, back to the 2nd fret on the A string, and uh, another hit on the 2nd fret, and then we're going to go to the open D, 1st fret on the D, and then 2nd fret, then back to that similar riff. That's pretty much it throughout the rest of the song. It's very similar. This song we're going to look at is Rockin' Bones. It's on the Psychedelic Jungle album. The cramps play like this. So we're starting off with a B and an A for that intro. Then it's straight into the riff, which is single notes, starting on the E string. We'll keep playing that riff for a while. It will move to the A. Just have a listen to the record and see when it does that. And for that, we're just moving up one set of strings. Back to the E. But then we get to, I guess you'd call it a verse, and there's some stops in there. go to that kind of chorus part again but this time after that it's going to go to the B and the A for a little turnaround and then ending on the E with a pause best thing to do is play along to the record and see when those changes are it's fairly simple, just got to listen out for what's happening. Next up we're going to look at Strict 9 which is done by the Sonics originally. The Cramps version goes a little bit like this. On this version we can hear two guitars, we can hear one guitar doing single notes. And then there's a second guitar. Um, that sounds like it's doing full bar chords. So when you're playing that you can mix it up and do a bit of both. So for the chorus. Next up there's a very cool solo played by Poison Ivy. I'll show you the start of that for now and then she kind of goes off on one. So double stops here, so it's your first two strings, your top two strings. Starting on the seventh fret, going to your fifth, and then going to your ninth. So just listen to that and see what she does. Then she does go up to the 12th and then goes pretty mental around here. So we've got. Uh, 
and we've played this before in my band, we've covered this, so I've kind of simplified it, I can show you what I do. I kind of repeat that again up there, higher up. Just to keep it simple, you could just solo around in the B chord. Something like that. So if you're keeping it in B, that works. You can use your minor pentatonic in B. You can use some double stops. Do your little Chuck Berry bend. Someone mentioned that they like stuff from A Date With Elvis. So this song is from A Date With Elvis. It's called What's Inside A Girl. I'm just gonna show you the start of that because it's got a really nice intro. Starting off in A for this one. With this one especially, you can hear some slap back echo on there. I've got the space echo RE20, but anything with a quick one repeat will sound good. The intro riff goes like this, we're in A. Then we're going up the octave to uh, an A up here. Plays that twice. Then we go up to this little pattern here. Back to your first one. go to the E. This one's for Kirsty. This one is called like a bad girl should. There's two guitars in this, so there's two ways to play it. And the main riff you can hear, which is probably the most pronounced, it's one guitar line, it's like this. If you've got some fuzz, now's the time to use it. So stick on your fuzz. I'm using the Phantom Fuzz. It's based on a Mosrite style 60s fuzz and it's quite towards the top end, it's quite kind of buzzy and tinny. So that's going to sound like this. Pause for some outrageous lyrics. So that's your first part, your intro, your main verse line, and then it kind of... <laughs> Letting that A ring out. Try and get some feedback going on if you can. You need some volume for that, which I don't have here too much. Residential area. When we come to the chorus, we go to a D. That's 
pretty much it. That's your um, fuzz guitar sound. Now we're going to look at the other guitar, which is more of a clean sound, but it's got some tremolo going on. So I'm going to turn the fuzz off, get the tremolo on. We'll need to know a few bar chords, or you could you could also use power chords. That was just good enough. So what that rhythm guitar is doing is something like this. On your intro, starting on the A, fifth fret on your E. You move that down two frets to the G and come back up. Then we go up to the C there. Splits my spleen. Then we go to D. D to a C. Back to A. This is this shape here. Then for the last part of the chorus, G to E. Like a bad girl should. So that's your verse and chorus parts. And there's like a solo. It's pretty much the same, but it goes down to the E. this a couple of times and there's a bit where there's some fast link ray style picking have a listen it's all there um that's pretty much the song two guitar parts verse chorus solo have fun with it i hope you enjoyed it that one's for kirsty I've had a few requests for the Poison Ivy version of Peter Gunn on the Death Ray Cat Patreon. This recording appeared on the Shots in the Dark compilation and it was also a bonus track on a reissue on Big Beat from Bad's film. The tune is by Henry Mancini and it was famously covered by Dwayne Eddy. I've done a video for that version, you can go check that out. In the Dwayne Eddy version and the Mancini version there's a big sax part taking the lead but in the Poison Ivy version, she's playing that sax part or doing her version of it on the guitar. So that's what we'll look at today. So this should be quite a simple tune. There's one thing to think about and that's the tuning. During a song, there's some real low notes being played. It's suggesting that it's either being played on a baritone or there's other ways around you could do it. You could tune your guitar down a few steps. I think it's being played on a baritone as a separate part. But what I wanted to do was do a version on a standard tuning guitar, so you don't have to worry about tuning. There's two guitars going on and a bass in this recording. So I think there's one standard tuning and one different tuning. But as I say, we'll stick to one tuning for now. So we're gonna be using the E and A strings here. We're gonna start on the low E string. And these notes are all played at the same rate. I'm going to start with two open E's. 
Go to the second fret and then play an open. Then we're going to go to the third fret and play an open. And then to finish, we're going to play the open A and then finish with a third fret there. So slowly. There we go. So that's one guitar part. By the way, let's talk about tone. So I've had fuzz on there. The lead part, I can hear a lot of fuzz going on. That rhythm part there, we might be better off playing with a bit of tremolo, maybe a little less fuzz, and just a bit of overdrive. I've also got the reverb tank on all the time. That's just my version of what I think might be going on in the recording. That's with a bit of tremolo. But for the main lead part, like I say, I'm going to go for this fuzz. I've got this phantom fuzz here. It's based on a 60s kind of fuzz. So one of the more tinier kind of sounding ones would work nicely. So let's look at the lead part. start off with an open D and the way it's played is kind of got this skipping kind of rhythm to it ba -da -da. three hits there and there's a couple more hits there and then we're gonna land on the second fret on the A string When we do that again, it's a slightly different rhythm. All the tabs, by the way, are going to be in the Patreon. Links for that below. So this time, there's a slightly different rhythm again. Do that skipping three on the open D. Then another two on there. Then we go into the second fret on the A string. Now we're going to go up to that octave of that there, which is the 4th fret on the G string. And we're going to go to the 3rd fret on the D string. Then we're going to go back to the 2nd fret on the A string. Then we're going to go to the open D. 2nd fret on the D. Then we're going to go up to the 3rd fret here four times, one on each beat, then we got another kind of, another skippy part, then back the way we came, then we're going to go to the third fret on the E, and then the fourth fret, there we go. This is the part where we might have to get a bit creative with what we do, because we're in standard tuning, the notes you hear are lower than what we can reach, so we've got a couple of options, that, and one of them is to skip that part totally, which is fine, because later on the same part is played but higher up on the register, and nothing is played during this part, so I think that's fine. Another option, you could play the low open E notes, that kind of still fits. What I would like to do is use the Bigsby to get those lower notes or close to them. That's what I'm going to do. It's not exactly how it is, but it's like a compromise. Something like that. I 
And then that happens pretty much the same. Like I say, I've tabbed it out so you can check out those slight differences. Then we're gonna to get to the part with the stop, so. <laughs> Again, we're at a point where on the recording, got some lower notes. So again, I'm gonna try using the Bigsby here, or you could just play those open E notes. Right, that would be fine. I'll just do a little dip there. It takes it down to the D. That's acceptable. So now we're on to the second part of this lead part. changing the sound slightly I've taken the fuzz off I'm going for a, more of a tremolo sound I've got a bit of overdrive on there but hopefully it's quite a natural sounding thing and I've still got the reverb on there so that's as far as I'm gonna go with that lead part if you want to see some more of the tune just let me know below <laughs> showed you how to do the lead and rhythm parts in the verse and chorus. I've had a few requests to look at the solo, so that's what we're going to look at today. This tune we're going to be in the key of E, and we're going to be using the E minor pentatonic scale and the E blues scale. It's good to know that kind of stuff, but also don't really need it. I'm just going to show you where to put your fingers for now. I'll quickly tell you about the tone that I'm using. So I'm using the 6120 here. It's got the TV Jones classic pickups. I'm going straight into the interface, I'm not using an amp. I am going into a Fender reverb tank. I'm also using a little bit of overdrive from the Soul Food pedal. I don't think you necessarily need these things to get this kind of sound. You've got something similar like some kind of spring reverb or a digital pedal and sounds a bit like that, that'll do nicely. Okay, so when I'm learning a solo, what I like to do is break it up into little bits. Here's the notes we're gonna start off with. So the first little chunk. Starting off on the second fret on the D string, which is an E. Then we go into the open G. Then we're gonna to go to the second fret. Then the third fret. We're gonna play that third fret a couple of times more. Then come back the way we came. And then we're gonna land on that second fret again, which is the E. Easy root note, we're gonna be landing there quite a lot. As you can see on the way back down, we did a little bend there on the second fret. It's quite a small bend, it's probably just one half tone. It's that. That's your first bit, so what I would do if I was learning from scratch, I'd get that bit down to begin with. There's some pauses and rest there, so what you might want to do is get the tune up, find the solo, listen to it and try and remember that rhythm. If you can tap it out, that'll help. Once we've done that little chunk, the next bit we're going to do is go up to the open B string. 
Now this is dead easy, it's just the open B string. The hard part is going to be getting the rhythm right, and again, I'd just say, listen back to the track, listen to this video, see what you can do. After the B, we're going up to an open E, so we're doing four hits on the B. And we're doing six on the top B there. Just going between the third fret, the G, and the open E, top E. Again, the tricky part is going to be the rhythm, going between the E and the G there. Did something similar, I think you can get away with that. When we're doing this, during that lick on the third fret, there's an ever so slight bend going on. It's not even a half tone, it's just a little bit of a little bit of something to give it a bit of texture. The next little chunk after that, we got this little trick here. What we're doing here is playing the B on the G string, which is the fourth fret there. And we're also playing the open B. So what we've got there is two ways of playing the same note. I'm a little out of tune. So hopefully if you're in tune those two notes should sound the same. I might be a little bit out, but it's close enough for now. But to make it a little bit more interesting we're going to slide from the third fret into the fourth there. So the first one on the recording just sounds like a straight up normal fret on the fourth fret and then the open B. Then after that for a while we're going back and forth from the slide to the open. The pattern changes a little bit and then it goes to just the slides. Again I've tabbed it out, you can have a listen see what you think. That's a little chunk there. After that... After that we're going to do a little a little skippy part on the open B. You could do that on the 4th fret on the G. I'm going to go here on the open. Bow ba da bow bow. You could also just play fewer notes if that's a little too fast. But essentially we're going to do a little skippy part. And then we're going to come back down that minor pentatonic scale. So we've got the open B, then we're going to go second fret on the G, open G, second fret on the D, and then open D. And then finally second fret on the A. Which is a B, and that happens when the tune goes to a B. Don't worry about that. On the way down there again, I gave that second fret on the G a little bend. Then we got another couple of descending bits, so we're going to go back to the open B. Two hits on the open B, third fret on the G, second fret with a little bend, open, and then second fret on the D. Then we go straight up to another little descending part. So we're doing the same little run, but it's split up slightly different. Open B, third fret on the G, second fret on the G, then two hits on the open G, then the second fret on the D. That's cool, now we're coming to our last little chunk. <laughs> second fret, the E. We got that little rhythm going on. Then we do a little open on the D. And then that's repeated again, slightly different again, you'll see in the tabs. And then 
we're going to land on a low E. Also, I'm hearing a little bit of a wiggle there on the second fret. That kind of thing. And that's the solo. So there's a Poison Ivy Goo Goo Muck guitar solo. I think I've got it as close as I can. Like I say, tabs and backing track will be in the Patreon. I'm also going to have a bonus lesson. I'm going to talk about how to make your own solo using that scale. You can do it over the backing track. You can do something similar. <laughs> If you've enjoyed that, I've done a Cramps playlist where I've done a bunch of Cramps tunes. You can request them if you want below, I'll see if I can do them. If you want to support these videos, you can buy some merch, you can join the Patreon. I'm also doing one-on-one -on -one lessons, so get in touch if you want to book one of those. Alright, see you later, good luck.